Now I find with helping people with their belly burn challenges and establishing not just only their eating and workout routines, but also their sleep routines is that most of us are lacking sleep. So my question to you is, do you ever just lay there and pick at what's keeping you up? You could be thinking about the stress that you've had today, or it could be everything that you have coming up like a work deadline or other events. And we all know how important sleep is and the effect that it has on your day. So today I wanna give you some tips on how you can get a good night's sleep and make getting good sleep a new favorite thing for you. Now, the first thing that we need to do is differentiate between stress and stress. So stress is something like the kids aren't going to bed at the right time. Or stress could be something that's like very small, like I gotta get this thing done before noon tomorrow. Now that is stress. Now deep stress is the stuff that really grinds at you, the stuff that you really can't control, and the stuff that makes a massive impact on your life. Because sometimes there's just small things like the house is dirty, and sometimes there's big things like you're worried about somebody's health. Now, the thing that I wanna know is, what do you got going on before bed? Are you getting yourself worked up? Are you keeping yourself awake with your phone? Do the kids have a bad bedtime routine? So do you get all worked up from that? And we have to make sure that once it's time to wind down, that we're putting ourselves in the environment that is going to create the most amount of calmness for you. So if watching a TV show is something that increases your energy levels, well, we don't wanna be watching shows like that before we go to bed. You wanna watch a show that is just basically calming, something that's a little bit even on the boring side. Don't watch your favorite show before you go to sleep because what's gonna happen is you're gonna look forward to the next one. And in fact, you'll probably watch a little bit of the next one or you'll let Netflix roll right to the next episode and next thing you know, you stayed up way past your bedtime. What about going on your phone? The thing about social media is that it's so random. Right, It could be good or it could be bad and either way can trigger an emotional response for you, whether it be you know, jealousy, like you see somebody just bought a new car and you're like, well, I want a new car, I do deserve a new car. So now you've just created a type of emotion that wakes you up. Or what if you read about somebody had something sad happen in their life? Now you've just put yourself into a sad state. So although we like to get on our phones and it's the only time of day that we can actually get time on our phone, I would tell you that for at least 30 minutes prior to when you actually wanna to go to bed, so set yourself a bedtime, don't go on your phone because you can't control what it is that's going to pop up in your feed. What I would tell you is to replace it with doing a Kindle book or something else on your phone, even if it's just like a, a, a YouTube, but make the YouTube, something like a video like this is great before bed because it's a little bit longer and it's on one steady topic and it's not going to trigger a bunch of emotions that you can't control right before you go to sleep. And if your kids are in a bad going to sleep wake up time, you gotta make sure that you work these boundaries slowly. You need to create the exact same environment that they're in, that you're in. So don't give them stuff that's going to get them worked up. You need to set clear boundaries. If you need to lay there and talk with them or let them talk, and sometimes you just let them work it out themselves and just let them go to sleep. But either way, there's gotta be a routine that's created from yourself and from them. And then how about your food intake? Are you eating too close to your bedtime? Now, if you're like me, I get it. We get home really late. Why yesterday I didn't get home till after 8.30 p.m. and the thing that I was able to do was aware that we had swimming and aware that I've been continuously getting home later and later because of the weather, the roads or whatever it is. And so as such, I ate my biggest dinner before we left, right? So I ate it in the midday and then I brought protein snacks. And you guys heard this from me where I put it in videos before where it's have protein snacks available in your car. So like beef jerky holds well, or I do the protein bars, or before I go, I'll grab a couple Nary's bars and I'll have a powdered shake and I'll drink that while I'm driving the kids to their events. And so as such, if you prepare properly, when you get home from these late events, 
you're already gonna be full at the event so that vending machine isn't gonna trigger you to eat. But then when you get home, all you have to do is have uh, a cup of EAAs, which is nice and sweet. It's gonna add fluid into your body and it's not gonna kill your calories and it's not going to affect your sleep. Because the thing about sleep is your stomach is a muscle. And if you put actual food in there, guess what happens? The stomach gets activated and it's like a workout for your stomach. Now, once your stomach consumes the calories that you consume, what ends up happening? Well, now you're trying to release the energy from the food. And if you don't have the energy where you're running around and you know doing going about your day or doing a workout, well, guess what happens is it's going to spark you to wake up, even if it's temporarily, and then it's going to affect your ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. So you really have to have that food timing. Intermittent fasting is a great way for you to cut weight and cut fat if you're in your caloric budget, but it's also a great way for you to get a deeper, fuller sleep. So start timing your food so that you eat your food later or earlier. Right, let me start over. So start eating your food a lot earlier. If your fast starts in and around seven where your last meal could have been even at 5 p.m., then you can eat earlier in the day. You can eat at like 7 a.m. That's okay. You're still intermittent fasting. It's just your food is getting shifted earlier because of the fact that you have evening routines. And when you go to these evening routines, make sure that you're having food that are good for your macros, primarily focused on protein so that you're not sparking too much of a caloric energy release that's going to affect your sleep. And of course, last but not least is caffeine. Caffeine blocks your ability to go to sleep. That's basically what it does. And I know a lot of us are like, well, I'm not even affected by caffeine. Well, that's a problem because caffeine should work. And in fact, it will work on every single person. You've just become immune to the effects of caffeine, which makes it even harder for you to get a fuller and go to sleep. And so limit your caffeine to earlier in the day. If you got to have a coffee to keep yourself awake for your kids events or whatever you got going in the evening, then have that. Have it before you go, but definitely don't have one after or during, right? Because it's going to affect your sleep. So watch your caffeine intake before you go to sleep. We have to understand that the more important we are to our kids, work, or in life in general, the more demand that's gonna be placed on us and the more stress that's going to happen. So put your plan together, do what you can with setting boundaries, then continue on the next day because you can't get everything done. Life is short, work is long. Work never ends. Kids events never ends. You have to be able to set your boundaries, set your limits and understand that you have tomorrow. So just like the kids develop bad habits on their phone, we have bad habits that we've developed. So going cold turkey might not be the solution. Ease them and yourself off of the TV or your phone slowly. Cut it out one minute out every single day. In fact, I have a chart that I have on my list that it says goals and every day I'm tracking my sleep routine. And in fact, I added 30 minutes more on my sleep, which allowed me to get up 30 minutes earlier and I got get a lot more done. So at the end of the day, I have less stress about work. And lastly, you got to know your portions, make sure that you're eating your food earlier in the day so that it's not affecting your sleep by waking you up, but never stuff and never starve. You need to focus on eating what you need and keeping your body balanced so that you can get a good night's sleep. So if you're having trouble sleeping, you might need more accountability to hit your sleep goal and you might consider hiring a belly burn coach. So if you aren't in a belly burn or if you are in a belly burn, then maybe that's something that you could focus on with your coach and you can ask them, hey, can I put in my daily report what time I went to bed and what time I woke up this morning? And this is a great way to start the habit. Having somebody watching over you every single day is a great way to build habits and establish them lifelong. If you don't know what I'm talking about or you want more inquiries about the belly burn, go to our website, www.fitclub.fit, message us belly burn and we'll get you started today.